In this lesson, we'll start to create an enhanced spine rig that's not only going to give us the flexibility that we need, but at the same time, allow us to maintain a nice twist distribution throughout the upper body. In the scene, I've created a quick spine chain. I've just snapped these bones to grid, and if we were to go to wireframe mode, you can see that we also have this curve centered within this chain. Again, I've just snapped to grid here. I've done this so we can get an idea of the pros and cons of working with Max's default Spline IK solver. So let's go ahead and get started with this. We first select our start joint, head over to Animation IK Solvers and choose the Spline IK solver. We connect to the end nub. And the last selection we make is to go ahead and choose that curve. So now Max will go ahead and create these helpers that we could use to drive the curve which in turn drives our bone chain. So you can see. Okay, so what's nice about this is again we have some really nice flexibility. So if this were to ever be applied to the upper body, if we were to envelope to these, the result would be pretty nice. What I don't like about this setup too much is the twisting. If we were to select this IK goal and head over to our motion panel, Let's find our IK solver properties and notice we have a start twist and an end twist parameter that we can modify. So if we start to move this start twist, you can see it's going to twist the entire chain. If we move the end twist angle, notice we get this really nice twist distribution. And that's exactly what we want. But we want that, that same twisting to happen from the start joint as well. So that's the limitation with this default spline in Max. It's a really nice setup, but I think we can get something a little bit better. So that's what we're going to learn uh, in the next few lessons. So I'm just going to go through, select all of these, and just delete them. So to start, what we're going to do is actually create a line shape that will not only be used to get the flexibility of the spine, but at the same time, we're going to use this as a reference curve to later on snap our bones to to get them centered. To get started with this, we can head over to our Create panel, create a line shape. From there, we can move over to our left view and snap a quick shape to our grid, just two points. That's all we need for the, the start shape. So I'll just go to the Snap options, just right click and turn on Grid Points. Close this out, press the S key and snap again two points. All right, coming out of the tool, what we can now do is start to align this curve and also turn off snap. So to quickly align it, we can first snap it to the thigh. I'll just press Shift A and snap. Now, of course, if we were to head over to, in this case, our back view, you can see that the curve is favoring the left side. To quickly center it, what we could actually do is utilize a position constraint. So with it selected, Let's choose position constraint and constrain it to our right thigh. Rerun the tool and constrain it to the left thigh. And notice now that curve is going to be centered. Now to remove the constraint, which we definitely want to do here, all we need to do is freeze transformations to clean this up. So we'll alt right click and choose freeze transforms and choose yes. Alrighty, let's head over to the perspective view from here. Now. What I like to do with the spine rigs is make sure we can, for one, avoid knee buckling as we rotate our center of gravity back and forth. And at the same time, we want to make sure that the twisting is going to be right, making sure that at the same time, the bone placement is going to be in the right spot. And again, this takes a good study of anatomy for this. I find for this character here, just drawing the, the chain straight up is going to be just fine. All right, so again, we want to prepare to set this up so that we can avoid knee buckling, right? What we need to do for this start, start point is actually make sure it's going to be centered between our right and left thigh pivot. To do that, all we need to do is head over to our Modify panel, go to our Vertex Subobject, select that bottom vertex, Press Alt-A, align it to our left thigh or the right, 
And what we want to do here is look at the axis in our scene. We know that we don't want it to be slanted like this. So all we need to do here is just check off the X position. Everything else is fine. And we can choose OK. OK, great. Now, going back to our perspective, we want to take this top point and bring it up so it's right at the start of the neck. All right, so now that that's fine, let's say we go ahead and rename this curve. We can call this C SHP for curve shape underscore spine 01. Great, now that that's done, we're going to rebuild this curve so that we can have an even spacing of vertex ticks. Now, the even spacing is going to allow us to modify this curve's flexibility to our liking so we can get it functioning the way we need it to very quickly. If we had more vertex ticks to deal with but they weren't evenly spaced, the flexibility that we get wouldn't be as as good, as nice. So to evenly space our, our points here, what we could do is actually convert this to a NURBS curve. So let's right click, choose Convert to NURBS. Choose the curve subobject, select the curve, and use the make, foot, make Fit option underneath our Curve Common Rollout. Now, what I'd like to do from here is actually use a number of six. The reason why is because we want five bones, and the six would be the nub. Okay, that's going to work well for this character. The reason why we're working with five is so we can have a midpoint bone, and that midpoint is going to help us to make sure we get the nice twist distribution throughout the spine. If you're working with more bones, that's totally fine, but just make sure you set this up where you can have a midpoint bone, because I'm telling you, with that, it's going to be far easier to set up this twist distribution, as we'll see as we progress with this setup. So knowing this, I'm going to go ahead and change the number of points here from 8 to 6. Now if we were to go back to our top level, head over to our Display tab, and scroll down until we get to our display properties. We could turn on vertex ticks and see that our ticks are evenly spaced. Great. Okay, so now that that's done, our next step is going to be to basically work on creating helpers that are going to be constrained to this curve so we can have those, those helpers basically conforming to whatever shape we get from this curve. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is stop the lesson here, and then the next lesson we will work on those helpers.